Vivo recently released the V7 Plus and we thought of looking into its cheaper variant, the V7, to see if it's worth getting rather than the V7 Plus, both with an all-screen feature. Of course, the prominent feature of the V7 or the V7 Plus for that matter is the all-screen display. Removing the conventional navigation keys and moving the fingerprint scanner at the back portion of the phone. Above the screen are the LED light, earpiece, front camera, and sensor. At the back panel of the phone is the slightly protruding camera and the flash beside it, with the Vivo logo below the fingerprint scanner. At the right side of the phone are the volume rockers, and below it is the power button. The V7 lets you have two SIM cards and a micro SD card all at the same time. The bottom part of the phone has a headphone jack, mic, charging port, and loudspeaker. The V7 displays a 5.7-inch 1440x720 IPS LCD and colors are leaning on to a serious tone compared to the dynamic tones of other mid-range phones. Either way, you'll still be able to enjoy the all-screen feature specifically when watching videos. The V7 is running on Funtouch OS based on Nougat, which looks slightly similar to the Color OS which the Oppo has. Lacking the app drawer and swiping up below the phone's display will lead you to the control center. Navigation keys can also be found below the V7's display, which you can switch to sliding gestures instead. The V7 also has a smart motion, which lets you open your phone in different ways and opening the phone's flash with a shake. The camera on the V7 has good quality output even for its price range. Color doesn't stray far from the original and are color accurate even on low lighting. Sharpness and detail are also apparent even on close-up shots with limited noise. Depth effect can also differentiate subject and background well, especially through edges of the focus. Nighttime shots can also pick up lighting well, staying color accurate either through close or distant lighting sources. Front camera shots are also pretty detailed, not losing much facial features, like beauty marks and small hair strands. The beauty filter on the other hand does the opposite, losing most facial features and making the skin color close to a pinkish tone. Nighttime shots also has the same case, picking up enough lighting to illuminate the subject and not losing facial details. Video recording can go up to 1080p at 30 frames per second with decent quality at daylight and nighttime shots. The V7 runs on a Qualcomm Snapdragon 653 with 4GB of RAM. With benchmark results, check it out here. Gaming on the Vivo V7 is quite good even with its current frame rate. Good graphics are still pretty visible even through high demanding games. Unlocking the V7 with either the fingerprint scanner or the facial recognition are also pretty responsive. The V7 may not be the beast of the battery department, it still packs a decent juice to last you a day of usage, and the fast charging is a big bonus. The loudspeaker on the V7 is located at the bottom portion of the phone and is pretty loud in our opinion. Here for yourself. With many mid-range even by 9 display handsets that are coming out today, despite not having a dual camera, the V7 has the greatest photo output in our opinion. It may not be the best at performance, but it is definitely a good phone for selfies. Comment down below what you think, like if you love the video, and subscribe if you want to see more. As always, this has been Rain of Manila Shaker. Thank you for watching.